Local members vote to suspend some elements of the contract, reduce their ra raise or forego a raise for a year. The, the, the statewide union uh, protects the contract as they believe that's the fundamental, uh, a fundamental necessity in their in their uh, in their uh, mission to represent the workers. But the the other point that arises out of this story is the unreality of some people who are not in the economy because they are in, the, in, a, in what I regard as a protected class. And I, and I would say tenured professors are very much, are very much in, the, in that category, so uh, I am culpable. But uh, uh, we have a four-year labor contract in our university, and we have pr been providing raises at the same time as massive layoffs and massive distress has occurred financially across the country. So we not only have an, an, uh, an, uh, an, we have, uh, not only have an issue of of whether the public sector is better compensated than the private sector, and I want to make clear that I know there's an argument about this, although I think at the end of the day we would find that the public sector workers are better compensated, but also that people in the public sector to a greater degree than I think is healthy for the country are living in a different economic world than people in the private sector. When I was a, a young political scientist, we used to talk about whether legislators, again, uh, a non-obvious connection, but I have these kind of uh, weird wiring in my head. We used to talk about whether legislators should be full-time or not. And, uh, and uh, the argument against was that people representing others should be in the economy that those other people are in, so that they experience life as other people do. The argument for is that the job is full-time and to get full-time uh, effective representation you need full-time work. It's a, it's a long time, it's a long time debate and I'm not going to resolve it here, but it is a concern in my opinion and I have numbers here, state, uh, full-time state workers, they're about 3.8 million, part-time state workers about 1.5 million, Full, uh, Full-time local workers, 11.4 million. Part-time local workers, 3.4 million. Not all are represented by labor unions, but the degree to which those people are living in a different economy than the rest of us, it's unhealthy for the society. That doesn't mean everybody should be hammered by a terrible economy, but the risks should be re uh, distributed, in my judgment, should be distributed and the benefits uh, uh, more equitably. We are talking about more than one in seven workers with some uh, who are public workers, uh, state and local public workers in our in our economy today. So we have the benefits war. We have the question of a dual kind of experience bases in the society, and people not experiencing the nature of distress, the degree of distress that other some people, the degree of distress that others are in the in the society economically. There are other dimensions of this. Uh, for example, a lot of these pensions that we've been talking are unfunded liabilities, as are health uh, uh, benefit commitments. Um, the Pew Trust, a, a respected foundation of no particular ideological predisposition, estimated that government liabilities for pensions and health insurance are unfunded by a trillion dollars underfunded by a trillion dollars. Another uh, study, uh, again quoted in the Wall Street Journal, suggested that the unfunded li government liability problem is about three times that size. Now, recently I did a study for uh, um, Ulster County and all the local governments in Ulster County to try to figure out whether some of the remedies I'm adva going to advance later can be engaged. And I found things that were really remarkable. For example, I found that, and some of you I'm sure may disagree with me about this, but I found that lots of people were getting health benefits without making any contribution at all as a consequence of labor contracts. So that, again, they weren't feeling the consequence that others were feeling in the society. But it's also true that lots of people who were retired were having their full be health benefits paid 
by the local governments that employed them. Now in New Paltz, where I live, uh, which is a beautiful place, but may not be as beautiful as this, although it's a rare admission for me. Uh, one value of losing myself in your landscape was that I got to see it. <laughs> that is, it didn't occur at night. But uh, the, the, uh, the fact is that, that some of our public officials said, you know, we can no longer afford to pay 100% uh, of health insurance premiums for our retired workers. We only want to pay 90%. So this became a public policy debate. And the retired workers uh, came out to public meetings and said, you know, this was an obligation you incurred when you employed us. And even though you have no contractual obligation to do it, you have a moral obligation to do it. And the public supported them. And the boards decided that they would not make that adjustment. So when we, when we find that we don't have the money for Hurlburt Road, I think it is, when we don't have the money for a, a sign on Hurlburt Road, we also have to th see what we're spending our money on and seeing whether we've come to an appropriate, uh, appropriate balance. Now, uh, there is a budget at the state level, an uh, uh, aggregated gap of $121 billion at minimum and probably as much as $140 billion. So that's at the state level. I have seen no aggregations of the gap at the local level, which I'm sure I wish I had found because it would be frightening and a good statistic to get you upset with. And the GAO, the Government Accounting Office, says into the far future state and local operating deficits will persist so that we have and largely driven by health care costs. Now, there's another issue that I think is important, and that is the issue of uh, state and local uh, debt. Now, in New York, we get upset if we find that any state on a per capita basis has borrowed more than we have, and we try very hard <laughs> to borrow as rapidly as possible, <laughs> so as that advantage is not lost to us. And we invent institutions that do that that bypass all legal constraints. We're very good at it. Uh, I've written books about Nelson Rockefeller. He was really cutting edge at finding ways to create debt after being first elect elected on a pay-as-you-go basis, and that's an interesting story. Now, why do I bring up the, uh, this point? Well, I figured out, I didn't figure out, I looked it up, and there's about $2.6 trillion in, in, in debt in the, State, uh, state and local government debt. Most people who are prudent, and we saw that there's a book on this that I haven't read, so maybe I will acquire it, especially if it contradicts what I have to say, but many people who are prudent and are looking for returns in the current economy are investing in uh, municipal bonds because they can get tax-free income and at a, a level of income that is uh, uh, higher than they can get from other conservative investments. And these are generally regarded as secure, and I can get into the reasons for that, but I won't because it's not my topic tonight. But if state and local governments are in extreme condition, then a question comes, can they pay the people they borrowed money from? Those people certainly have first claim on their, uh, on, for under the law, have first claim on the resources of state and local governments. But, in fact, in practical political terms, will those bondholders be satisfied if workers are needed to plow the roads and uh, um, make sure that uh, there are teachers standing in front of classrooms and uh, do the, the core functions, pick up the garbage and police the streets and so on of local government? Now, one aspect of crisis that we had a little bit of a scare a couple of years ago, but one aspect of, of, of economic crisis that we have not experienced is, is panic over state and local borrowing and the degree to which it will be uh, paid. But when we think about implications of my talk tonight, that is massive uh, costs, inability of local governments 